Hey, what's up? It's Jared with Ditch Auto. Today I wanted to talk about why you're getting blurry images with your camera. Now, the reason that I'm making this video is that I talk to a lot of people and they ask me why they get blurry photos when they're shooting. You know, they're using manual mode. They're, uh, they feel like they have a good understanding of their camera, yet they're still getting blurry photos. Now, there's a couple things that could be happening that result in you getting blurry photos. The number one thing that I always ask people is what shutter speed they're shooting at. And a lot of times their shutter speed is just too slow for whatever it is that they're taking photos of. Now what that means is that the shutter when it opens to capture an image it's staying open for too long allowing too many things to happen before it shuts down. So that shutter opens it takes in light and of course captures that image and then closes and during the time that it's opened uh, any movement or anything like that can become blurry. And so the faster moving objects that you are capturing such as people walking entering in and out of your frame uh, your animal moving or different things like that. Uh, if the shutter is staying open for too long, you're going to end up with some blur. Now, in most cases, I shoot at 1 1 60th of a second. I shoot at that shutter speed because that allows me to, uh, between me following the ob object, whatever it is that I'm tracking, and the object moving, that's a fast enough shutter speed to typically be able to get everything nice and sharp. However, a lot of times moving and flapping arms and stuff like that, people who talk with a lot of hand gestures, um, the hands might not be sharp. And so I might need to bump up to 1 to 50, 50th of a second in order to capture everything sharp. Uh, so your camera settings really come into play there because you need to make sure that you're not telling your camera to stay open for too long. And then of course, too many things can happen. And so shutter speed is definitely a contributor. And I think one of the main contributors to a photo being blurry. The second thing is that you might not have the right thing in focus. Now, most of us use autofocus on our cameras. I think autofocus is just becoming better and better, especially with eye autofocus on most of the new mirrorless cameras. Uh, for example, the Sony, cameras, uh, this Nikon Z6 that I'm holding in my hands, and of course Canon has had some eye autofocus for a while. And they're really good at making sure that they get that subject's eye, which is the thing that we want to have in focus. But that doesn't necessarily happen all the time. Sometimes the camera will focus on an ear, which means the face might be blurry, or the camera just does some guesswork and ends up focusing somewhere else altogether, resulting in a blurry image. Most of the time though, the camera is going to get pretty close and because it can get pretty close, the image is going to look okay until you zoom in and you see, oh, well, one side of the face is a little blurry and the other, the one that's closer to the camera, it just something's off about this photo. And so even though these cameras are getting absolutely fantastic at pulling focus on what you probably intended on them getting focus, uh, I still tell my camera exactly where I want focus to be by using selective point focus on the camera. Now it has different names depending on what camera you're using, whether you're on a Sony, a Nikon, or a Canon, but selective point focus essentially means telling your camera not to use the whole sensor for autofocus. So if something going on out here in the corner, the camera isn't going to try and focus on it because that autofocus point is exactly where you put it. And so on cameras like uh, this Nikon Z6 here, where I can control the focus point with this joystick on the back or even tapping on the screen, I'm holding the camera up in front of my face and I've got my thumb on that joystick and I can move the focus point wherever I want. Typically, if I'm shooting photos of people, I, I position them in a similar place in the image all the time, so I'm not constantly moving that focus point all around. Maybe I'm just moving it a little bit to position it exactly where I want them. And so that little tiny square, I can move around instead of the camera thinking like, okay, you know, there's four people there, which one do I focus on and hope that it's the best one? And well, okay, there's a lot of eyes there that I have to focus on now. Which eye do I choose? I'm telling the camera camera, choose this person in this specific spot, which yes, does bypass some of the features that these cameras are getting really good at, but essentially they're still not so good because they can't read my mind and they're not always getting it right, which means I might miss my shot. You know, shooting professionally, I don't have multiple opportunities when I'm out shooting uh, to get a, an additional shot sometimes. The moment was perfect for that split second 
and then it was gone. A lot of times with our kids and different things that we have, sports and whatnot that we're shooting, um, the things happen, everything happens really fast, and then before you know it, the moment's gone, or the second is gone, and you really need to make sure that your camera is dialed in order to get those shots that you want. So how many times have you gone and looked at your photos? And many of those shots that you really wanted to get were blurry because the camera just didn't pull focus on the right spot. So if you do have the most modernist cameras that are out right now, um, of course they're gonna be a little bit better, but if you have a camera that's maybe a few years old, um, my trick for using selected point focus is really going to change the game for you and uh, and getting that specific spot and focus every single time. I don't have to take multiple shots of something hoping that the camera is gonna get it in focus because I'm forcing the camera to pick the exact spot that I want it to focus on and the camera does just that every single time. The only times when the camera it gets a little tricky is when I'm in such low light situations that the camera has a hard time focusing anyways. But even in those situations, the camera is no longer doing a ton of math, trying to figure out everything all the way across the entire sensor. It's just looking at that one particular spot, which means the camera has a much higher likely chance of getting that spot in focus. Now, of course, there are some other factors uh, that, that could result in you getting blurry photos. Um, if you're shooting with a really fast lens, which means it has a super wide aperture, like an f1.4 or something like that, your depth of field is so shallow that if you're not using a selected point focus, your camera could focus on the nose when the eye is what you wanted it focused on, and that small distance between the tip of the nose and the eye could mean your focus is off because you wanted that eye nice and sharp and the tip of the nose is what ended up being sharp. So a lot of times um, you may even consider that as well, that maybe your aperture is so wide and uh, your lens is you know, not able to get a depth of field that can get enough of your image in focus. I know we all want those super fast lenses because the fall off is crazy, the background is super blurry and you get that great effect, but sometimes it makes it a little trickier for grabbing photos which is another reason why I use that selective point autofocus. So I hope that that helped you out. I uh, hope that you can implement selective point autofocus into your process for taking photos. Yes, it is another thing that you need to pay attention to while you're shooting. And if you're shooting in manual mode like I do and a lot of other professionals do, you're now thinking about your shutter speed, your aperture, your ISO, and your focus point, which is a lot of stuff to be thinking about at all times. But with practice, it makes perfect. And if you need some help with that, make sure to check out the Ditch Auto course, which is a free course that helps you start shooting in manual mode and understand how to shoot manual mode and best practices to get faster at shooting in manual mode. It's a free course and I've got it linked down below. So thanks so much for checking out this video. If you liked it, make sure to click the subscribe button and the little bell icon so that way you get notified when we put out new videos. And of course, check out our Instagram. We've been posting a lot to that lately as well, which is ditch underscore auto. Thanks so much and I hope to see you back in the next one.